Welcome to the Third Generation Wrestling Podcast with your hosts, Eric and Rob. Welcome back, everybody, to the Third Generation Wrestling Podcast, 3GW. Back to talk predictions here. This time we're talking AEW. Double or nothing. Host the Real Big E. Co-host Rob the Ambassador. How you feeling, man? How's it going? It's going good, man. Feeling good. Uh, you know, man, I don't know, man. The buildup for this show hasn't been the greatest to me, but it's a big show, so I'm looking forward to it regardless. And it's Memorial Day weekend, so... Not not compared to previous uh, uh, double or nothing, no. But I'm still excited. There's some good matches on this card, so I'm still excited. Um, uh, there's a couple I've really been looking forward to. A few that I just found out about today because I've been behind on my AEW, but I did watch last week and this week today, so I'm caught up. Um, yeah, so we're going to talk about it. Talk about stuff that happened, but first, we got to talk about something coming up in July. Oh, wrestling legend Ric Flair. Okay. (laughs) 73 years old, take part in his last match on July 31st in Nashville. Uh, Has not wrestled a match since 2011. Um, this is an article on CBS. The legendary Ric Flair is set to make another in-ring walk as, as it was announced Monday that Flair will wrestle his final match on July 31st. Um, Flair, who many consider to be the greatest of all time in wrestling history. This match will take place at an event associated with StarCast Wrestling Fan Convention in Nashville the day after, day after WWE hosts SummerSlam in the same city. According to the StarCast website, the event is under the banner of Jim Crockett Promotions. It is being produced by thriller-affiliated Duzio and will stream live on Fight TV. Um, so there was rumors about this match being a six-man with a uh, flair team with FTR going against, uh, I forgot who, and Ricky Steamboat. Ricky Steamboat has come out and said he declined to do the match. So I don't know what's going to happen now. I've heard names such as even Hulk Hogan being thrown out. Oh, please. Possibly be one of the opponents. And it's just like, like, okay, come on. Now, at least I can buy Rick even putting the boots on because I've seen him in the ring. He never really had any physical issues. Unlike Hogan, who's had everything replaced, can barely walk. Like, no, that would be a shit show. So, uh, you know, this is wrestling news, and you are the woo big fan. Gotta know what you're thinking. Well, I'm not happy about it. Uh, <laughs> I feel like Rick, look, we went to WrestleMania 24. That mm-hmm. was supposed to be his farewell match and should have been there. his farewell match. It was a great match between he and Shawn Michaels, and that's how it should have ended. So I don't know if this is just one last grasp at glory or one last grasp at money or both. Either way, I, I feel bad. I, I think it's sad because either Flair is really hurting for money or he just can't he just can't be a normal guy. And I I remember a statement he made on his 30 for 30. And for those who haven't seen it, I I highly suggest you watch it. I just bought that DVD actually. Um, He said, I always had to be the man because I was never happy just being a man. And I wonder if that's still what's going on with Rick, because at 73 years old, you have no business in the ring. Uh, You look at some pictures on the internet and you see him flexing his arm and hey man, dude looks like maybe he's in good shape. I'm glad that it is a tag team match and not a singles match. I initially thought it was going to be a singles match. I thought that would be a disaster. 
whatever deficiencies, and there's probably going to be many uh, that Flair has <laughs> at this point in his career, he might be able to cover some of those up in a six-man tag. I can understand why he would want to work with Ricky Steamboat. He always says Ricky was his guy, the, the best opponent he ever had. They had great chemistry, great matches together. But I'm also glad that Ricky said, look, I had my moment at WrestleMania 25, and I think at the backlash after that where he wrestled Jericho, the crowd chanted, you still got it. And Ricky said he just wants to leave it there. I wish Rick could do the same thing, but he's not. This is going to happen, and so my curiosity is going to get the best of me, and I, and I am going to watch it. Oh, we're going to watch it, and we're going to cover it. <laughs> oh, yeah. If this is a wrestling show first, and we're going to cover wrestling. And, and it, it sounds like they're actually putting a decent card together, so might be okay. Might be. Might be. All right. Time for the main event. We're going to get down to these predictions for the uh, event on Sunday. Now, I really wish AEW got back to doing the Saturday show. The Saturday shows was way easier to do. Um, I don't know. Like, it's like them and WWE keep seesawing what they're doing. WWE's doing Saturday shows now, and AEW's doing Sunday shows. I, I don't know what's going on anymore. At least it is Memorial Day on Monday. I don't have to work the next day. So, yeah. Okay. So on the buy-in, we got a tag team match. Hook Hawson, a.k.a. Hook versus, I mean, Hook and Dan uh, uh, Houston versus Tony Nese and Smart Mark Sterling. <laughs> um, I haven't seen much of Tony Nese in AEW. I forgot he was even in <laughs> AEW because they've taken so much talent from WWE. Uh, so I just... I have seen Hook work, though, and real good. He's real good. They need to be doing more with him, if you ask me. Um, so I'm going to go with, you know, Hook. Hook, they're going to they're gonna win. They're going to they're win. That's yeah, I agree. Uh, to me, there's not much suspense to this match. Uh, yeah, I mean, I like Nice. Uh, but, yeah, Hook and uh, who, who's his? Uh, who's and then Houston, I guess they're brother. I was gonna, uh, yeah, he's the guy who paints his face, right? Yeah, yeah, they're gonna win. <laughs> yeah, okay. Jade Cargill defending her TBS championship against Anna J. Um, I do like Anna J. I know she was one of uh John Huber's proteges. Um, that big sister. Ain't quite ready to drop that belt yet. I mean, and she got two, you know, people up by her side. You know, she's got Red Velvet and uh, uh, Kiera Hogan. So it's shenanigans uh, galore. Uh, she'll retain. It won't be clean, most likely. It'll probably be, again, shenanigans. But she'll still be champ when it's all said and done. Yep, complete agreement. Jade Cargill, she's just too hot right now. Uh, no way should she lose, and not to Anna Jay. And I like Anna Jay, like you, I like her. But no, she 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 can't beat Jade Cargill. That that shouldn't happen, and it won't. The House of Black, uh, Malachi, Buddy Matthews, and Brody King versus Death Triangle, Pac, that bastard, <laughs> Penta, El Oscuro, and Ray Phoenix. Uh, probably a candidate for show stealer right here. Um, this is tough because I can't remember last time Pac won on pay per view. We saw Lucha Bros win the tag team championships at All Out. Great show. House of Black kind of need a win to keep defining this faction. So I'm gonna go with House of Black, and I'm hoping that. You know, Malachi Black is the, the death blow with Black Mass or whatever he's calling that move now. Um, they may be even kicking Pac's head off. And I think that'd be a hell of a few, Pac and uh, Malachi Black. I think that'd be great. Yeah, I'm going to go House of Black. Man, hard one to predict. The first two, I feel like, are slam dunks. This one really could go either way. Yeah, it could. But I do think they need to elevate House of Black. And I think a, a big win on a show like this would do that. 
So I'm going to agree with you and pick them as well. Yeah. Right, this is probably going to steal the show. <laughs> I probably shouldn't even talk about this yet. But the Hardy Boys, or the Hardys as they are in AEW, versus the Young Bucks. This is tough to call because on one hand, I can see this being a something that they continue, like not a one-off. Uh, and it's like, okay, Young Bucks haven't really been winning on pay-per-view, but the Hardys don't really need to win either because they got kind of already submitted. They're Hall of Famers either way you look at it. They've done so much. Stuff. Um, I, I I gotta say, Young Bucks. I just feel like there's just no way they're gonna lose. <laughs> I feel it'll be a hard fought a hard fought match. I think, but that that youth will uh, reign supreme. I guess, for lack of better words, <laughs> I think I think Jeff and Matt will. Put on a show, no doubt, but it I just think it makes more sense for Young Buck to win. Yeah, man. Another tough one to call. But I am actually gonna disagree on this one. I, I think, like you said, this has the uh potential to be the show stealer. I also think this one has the potential to be one where the audience is is very vocal, very much involved, mm-hmm. uh, because of the Hardy Boys, because you know, they're a legendary tag team. Everybody loves them, and uh, I, I think everybody is going to root for them to pull this off. <sighs> oh, yeah, they're, baby, they're still the baby faces. Yeah, I, I, man, I'm going to say that they will win it. Uh, the crowd will really pop for it, and but but I, I don't feel good about that prediction, but I'm going to stick with it. it it'll be interesting. Uh, yeah. I won't be mad. I won't be mad either way. I just know that they're not going to disappoint. Yeah, either way, we're going to see a great match no matter how it goes, and that's that's really the main thing that I'm concerned with. Okay, uh, it's kind of tough calling this one because we're kind of jumping the gun doing the prediction show early. We try to get this these prediction shows out a few days ahead of the pay-per-view so people have time to watch, obviously. But the uh, Women's Owen Hart Cup Tournament Final it's going to be uh, Dr. Britt Baker, DMD, versus either Ruby Soho or Chris Statman. So kind of a two-part prediction here. So uh, the Ruby and Chris Statman match will take place on Rampage. I, I, if I'm going with my AEW mind, I'm going to say Statlander will win. I can see Stalin and I'm just going to go and jump the gun. Stalin and winning the whole thing. I can see it um, for the women. She's kind of been the women's workhorse as far as like in the ring, got it, got injured, came back in better shape, a better wrestler, and has really earned her, her stripes. I mean, she's put in the work. So I, I'm kind of pushing for her. Not that I'm not, you know, everybody know I love me some Ruby. Me too. I met Ruby. Love me some Ruby, uh, but I just feel like Chris has put in the work and she's earned it. So I, I'm going to pick her not not only to win on Friday, but to win on Sunday. Well, damn, man, kind of a boring show because I, I'm in agreement with you here. Uh, I said <laughs> when we did our all out show, when we saw her wrestle, uh, gosh, who did, she, who did she wrestle that night? Statlander. I can't remember. Mm. Oh. But that was right a great match and i felt like statlander really really elevated herself it and was, it was Britt baker oh that's right you know how could we forget okay yeah you see so many matches Britt yeah but uh okay yeah there it is i still haven't got mine yet i'm still working on that it's yeah another you know story yeah still working on it i did pick up pick up some equipment so uh, I'll, I'll be bringing some of it with me. Uh, okay. I don't know if you can use it or uh, I can use it, but I'll be bringing it and you can just take whatever you think would help you out. 
Okay. Um, but yeah, back to the match. I'm with you. I think Chris Statlander is just at that level. She's put herself in this spot where she is one of the top women in the company. Britt Baker doesn't need it. She's a former champion. So either Ruby or, or Chris Statlander could really use this, this title and, and this, uh, this bump in their career. But I'm, as much as I love Ruby, like you, man, I, I, got, I, I just feel like Chris Statlander is that girl right now um, mm-hmm. that, that they want to put take to that next level. So that's who I'm going with. Yeah. Uh, I, I mean, she's already lost to DMD a couple times. And, you know, I know, I think her and Ruby wrestled before too and, and Statlander won. I, I just think she's, they got to be consistent too consistent booking and that's one of the people who you organically brought up you need to stick with her give it a win yeah and i think if i heard soho correctly on dynamite i think she said she actually beat statlander the first time they met so it's going to be interesting i'm actually going to watch rampage tomorrow after smackdown i'm looking forward to it yeah i'm gonna check it out i'm gonna check it out um so i just wrapped up the uh, Dynamite episode from last night. So, no, the men's Owen Hart Cup tournament final is going to be Samoa Joe and Adam Cole. Baby. I am going Joe, 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 Joe. Uh, I, 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 I like me some Adam Cole, but I just think they are doing so well with booking Joe. And this is the problem with AEW. Like once somebody loses their momentum, it's real hard for them to get it back lately. And unless you're Adam Cole or a, a punk or hangman or Brian Danielson who, who can just get in the right program and bring themselves back up. But I think this would be great for Joe. He's the ROH television champion. I, I, I want to see Joe do it. Hmm. Well, I am going Adam Cole, baby. <laughs> All right, man. Ever since he's come to AEW, I mean, he to me, he's underachieved. And he's too great of a talent. And, and he's still young. He's too great of a talent to not get something. And so I think this is it for him. Um, so I'm picking Adam Cole. If Joe wins, I won't be too upset, but I think Cole needs it more right now. And so that's that's my pick. All right. I'm at it. You know, I was Adam Cole. We made him a superstar of the year. We both did a couple years yeah. ago. So yeah, but you know, his his star is falling a little bit, man. He hasn't been that dude. So he needs something. He he, he you know, AEW brought him there. It was a, I mean, we were there the night they brought him back, man. Huge pop. Yeah, but uh, it, you know, to me, they haven't done right by him so far. So this would be a way to do that. Yeah, it would. We'll see. Yeah, I'm curious about this match too. Um, Serena D versus the AEW Women's Champion Thunder Rosa. Serena, this face used to look up to you. Not anymore. And on Sunday. You're not gonna see this face. On Sunday, the war pain comes on. On Sunday, the worried inside male will take over. On Sunday, La Mera Mera will teach you a lesson of respect. For disrespecting Tony, my mentor Dustin, all of you guys, and especially me, the AEW Women's Champion, Thunder Rosa. Uh, I like the new AEW Women's Championship. Thank God they changed that shit because I hated that other belt. I thought that other belt looked cheap. It was small. It was just like, ah, we got to make them a belt, right? Uh, give them that. Okay. You know, this looks like an actual championship. I'm glad she has it. Um, I wish Serena D would eat some carbs because she looks like a damn skeleton. Uh, yeah. yeah, you ain't gotta be that, that, that thing, okay? But uh, 
I think she's a, a good heel. Um, I think this will be a good match. Probably one of the better women's wrestling matches you'll see in AEW, but I think Thunder Rosa will retain. It's her first big defense on pay-per-view, so I think she'll she'll get the win here, and I'll be all about it. Hey, John. Oh, I'm sorry, man. I jumped in. I'm sorry. Oh, we're good. But yeah, yeah, man. I think it's too soon for a Thunder Rosa to lose. So I'm 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 rooting for Thunder Rosa. I mean, I think Serena Deeb will put on a good match. I, I think I mean, man, I I think we could maybe see some blood. I think this could get a little messy. You know, uh, both of these women. I, I think it could get get borderline brutal, but I do think Thunder Rosa will retain. All right. At the three-way tag team championship match for the AEW World Tag Team Championships. Jurassic Express defending against Team Taz, Ricky Starks, and Powerhouse Hobbs versus Keith Lee and Swerve Strickland, who had a fantastic match on Dynamite, by the way. Yep. The match was great. The triple threat. Um... I'm going to get straight to it. Champs retain. I can't see them dropping the belts to either one of these two. Not that I don't like Strickland and Keith Lee. Not that I don't like even Team Taz. Even. I think Ricky Starks has a lot of potential, especially being a smaller statured person. His personality is huge, though. And, man, I, I hate to be one of these people that compare him to Dwayne, but his face, faces he makes, he looks like they could be – he, he could be his younger brother. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sure The Rock was probably a huge influence on him, like so many young wrestlers. So, yeah. Yeah, but I mean, you can't, you, you might feel that way. Yeah, but genetically, he just face, the faces he makes is like, you know, young Rocky Maivia. But um, yeah, I'm sticking with the Jungle Express retaining one more time. I think, you know, there are other bigger tag teams, more established tag teams, I can see them dropping the belts to. I can't see them losing it to, you know, Team Taz, yeah, they've been together for a while, but Keith Lee and Strickland were kind of thrown together. You know how I feel about throwing together tag teams, so, yeah. Yeah, but, man, uh, Keith Lee, and, you know, and Swerve, I mean, people know who they are. They seem to pop for them. They seem to like them, and we've we've been hearing the news <laughs> about some of the criticisms of Tony Khan and, and not enough African-Americans having title. Mm-hmm. Jurassic Express has had a, at least by today's standards, a pretty long title run. Uh, they they won it back in September. Yeah, and I, uh, man, tough one. I know. I, I, yeah, that's why I was say like, I'm gonna say Swerve and Keith Lee. Okay. Yep. Going with the brothers. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, yeah. I, I think, you know, they are new and they, they were thrown together, but I think they're a good fit. I think the crowd is behind them. And like I said, Tony Khan maybe has heard some of these whispers. Maybe this is a way to say, okay, hey, here you go. Yeah, but, you know, Jay Cargill, Scorpio Sky. It's not like I, look, I don't really. I don't really agree with th- those criticisms because when you look at, you know, Scorpio Sky, is that a good run? Jade Cargill, look, she was the right woman to to elevate the way they're doing her. She she needs to be a world champion. Well, yeah, at, world champion. Not at at some point here, quick. Yeah. Um, but there, to me, some, you know, look, Powerhouse Hobbs and, and Ricky Starks, okay, you know, yeah, they've been together a while. Are they, are they tag team championship level? Mm, I don't know. I don't know, man, but I can, I can see them put, because you have to remember, even though they're new to AEW and they were thrown together, fans are, are familiar with these guys. They, they know their history. So it's not like they're strangers to the, to the wrestling fans. Mm-hmm. So I, you could get away with, with putting the titles on them, even though it, it, they're new to AEW. So I'm going to, I'm going out on a limb on this one, but that's going to be my pick. Okay. So we got to talk about this. <laughs> so something they've been building to for months now, years even, if you really want to think about it. MJF versus 
Ward. No. A long time coming. And he's one power bomb away on the chair before getting his hands on MJF. This Sunday on pay per view. Now the winner of this match. Woo! Okay. I get it. They took away his music. And he comes out in handcuffs every time. And the fans are chanting Wardlow, and he's got security with him every time he comes out. I'm like, see what you're doing. <laughs> see what y'all do. <laughs> this better stop once he gets his music back, okay? But I'm, 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 you know, certain gimmicks you can do, you can bring back, you know, over time, just put your little spin on them. But there's certain ones you just, people are going to call attention to. There's another wrestler in WWE that tried to do, you know, everybody, you know, knows Ryback. He got a lot of shit for, you know, the look. That's all I'm saying. But fans seem to be behind Wardlow big time, which is great. And I, I, I think he's going to be big. I think he's going to be world champion probably within the next year or so. But, as far as this match, um, I think it's clear as day that Wardlow's going to win. Uh, <laughs> kind of has to at this point. This guy gives music back. He's got to they, they got to take the ball and run with this guy while he's hot. Right now, he is white hot. Crowd's in love with him, and it's not, and especially in today's day and age, you don't get too many big guys that the crowd's behind because everybody thinks they're big and they're slow, and they're just putting them over because of yada yada yada. So. And, he, and he's not a big, slow guy. He's a big guy, but he can move. He can wrestle. And he's got the look. And he's got the power. And people love seeing those power bombs. So, yeah, he's going to power bomb MJF into eternity, probably through a couple tables, probably through on the on the ring steps, and then probably once the final one in the ring. Yeah, he's going to probably power bomb three or four people by the time the match is all said and done. So, Wardlow. MJF, I think that Wardlow, I think Wardlow is going to beat him all over the ring. He's going to do everything you said, but then through some shenanigans, somehow MJF will win. I don't know if you remember when Shawn Michaels first fought Undertaker at uh, Bad Blood. It was the mm-hmm. introduction of Kane, and Undertaker beat him bloody, beat him bad, beat him all but, over the but, ring. But Kane, Kane, that that's why he lost. Well, that's but th- that I think this match is going to re- be reminiscent of that. Somebody is going to come in. There's going to be some shenanigans. The fans oh, yeah. are going to get what they want in the sense that MJF is going to take a, a terrible beating. He's probably going to bleed, but at the end of it all, I do think he is going to win. And that's really how you keep the feud alive. I mean, if you just have Wordlow just beat him down, I mean, then feud over. But if you have MJF win after taking that beat down, especially by shenanigans, you keep the feud alive. I, I think it's going to be MJF. Interesting. Didn't yeah. see that coming. <laughs> yeah. I mean, because look, it, it's too, that's too easy of a slam dunk to just say Wardlow's just going to walk in and just smash him in. How many pay-per-view matches has MJF won? He's, he, record beat, of- he beat Jericho, remember? We all thought he, Jericho was going to win MJF one, didn't he? No, Jericho oh. won because remember that we thought Jer- we thought MJF was going to win because Jericho had put his career on the line. Oh, that's right. But that was the first time he had lost on pay per view, um, and he won the next one. I, I don't know if that was first. Didn't he? He also lost to Moxley on a pay per view. I don't think his record on pay per view is very good. No, it is. Surprisingly, it is. Okay. I, look, either way, I still don't. I think that it's too much of a slam dunk. It just seems too obvious to me. I think Wardlow will beat him badly, but somehow, some way, MJF is going to get the win. We'll see. <laughs> we'll see. All right. Moving right along. There's a lot of goddamn matches. Jesus Christ. 11 matches. Hmm. The anarchy in the arena match because John Moxley was not doing the uh, stadium stampede bullshit. Yeah, he said, I'm not doing that shit. That's that's an exact quote right there. 
That's why I don't need to get involved. And look at this, Brian Danielson hobbling down the ramp as well, going right at Jericho. He, Brian Danielson moving around pretty damn good. Yes, because he's an incredible athlete. In fact, he's the perfect wrestler. And now the referee court charging out, trying to separate these five crazed, bloodthirsty individuals. We're, we're just now, look, I'm glad it's not cinematic, even though of all the cinematic matches that I've seen, that was one of the better ones. Yeah, it was. Um, so we got the Jericho Appreciation Society, Chris Jericho, Matt uh, 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 Matt Menard, Angelo Parker, Daniel Garcia, and Jake Hager versus Eddie Kingston, Santana and Ortiz, and the Blackpool Combat Club, Brian Danielson and John Moxley with William Regal. This will probably either main event or be the lead up to the main event. Yes. Second from the top. Yeah, it'll be second. It won't be the main event. Um, expect carnage, I guess is the best way I can put it. Anything and everything's going to go. People are going to bleed. I'm expecting barbed wire. I'm expecting uh all kind of tables and, and and bad shit happening you know anything pretty much anything darby allen would do is probably happening this match i'm surprised not lights out but uh yeah uh mm, as far as a winner jericho appreciation society i think they're gonna win um I, I, I don't know why. Uh, I just feel like they are. <laughs> I don't think they should. You know, I know Santana Ortiz especially want to get revenge and, you know, uh, Moxley. But Brian Downs is not 100%. So, I keep that in mind, too. Yeah, I'm going to stick with my pick, though. I'm going to say Jericho. Well, for me, this is another hard one. I mean, I mean really could go either way. Um, I'm gonna agree. <laughs> agree. That was, that was a painful. Well, it, it, it's not because I I'm invested and I care who wins. I, I really don't care which team wins. It's just for me, it's a hard one to predict because yeah, I mean you you could see the one of these teams winning. Uh, at the same time, it doesn't hurt either team to lose. I don't think we're seeing the end of this feud with this match. I think it's going to continue. So, I mean, it could go either way, but I'm just going to say that Jericho's team gets over somehow. I think so, somehow. Okay. And that takes us to the main, main, main event. CM Punk. Challenging Hangman Adam Page for the AEW World Heavyweight Championship. Now, based on what's been going on, how AEW is kind of in an influx with everything and, and all the, I don't know, it's just been a lack of interest, I guess, with um, the show. It was usually the champion is the anchor of the show. When Kenny Omega was the champion, he was the anchor of the show. As much as I hated that whole thing with him and uh, 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 what's his manager's name? Oh, the guy in pink. Don Callis. Him and Don Callis. That is uh, working my damn nerves, but it was <laughs> right. It kept you interested. Yeah, I, I didn't mind Callis myself. <laughs> <laughs> and then even when Moxley was champion, it was still interesting. It just hasn't been with Hangman. I think it's because he's such a white meat baby face. It's just hard to get behind. He has no rough edges to him. He tries. It just doesn't work. Um, 
I think if you don't pull the trigger now with Punk, it would it would hurt because um, he's not no spring chicken. If you're going to give him a title reign, you probably should do it early, get it out the way, have him be champ for a while, and then have him probably lose to a returning Kenny Omega down the line because that's the biggest match I could see them doing is Punk versus Omega. So that's what I'm going to predict is... And there are, yes, some hometown, shy town, heart <laughs> strings to go along with it. CM Punk, AEW champ, sounds good to me. Sounds good to me, too. I think that is what's going to happen. Hangman just has not grown into this role, as, as far as I'm concerned. He, and, he's and just, let, me, let me just say real quick, I think you'll sure. agree, not... Sure. The in ring, the in ring is not the problem. That man can wrestle. No, oh no, no, not at all. Yeah, it's just, just I don't know, man. Lack of charisma. Even though he still has a, a big fan following, I think this is another match where the crowd is going to be very vocal because you're going to have. It's probably going to be split. Split. You're going to have. A, you, it I was split on dynamite. Some, yeah, I think slightly more punk fans, but uh, Hangman is going to. It's going to be going back and forth. It, it's going to be a, a very, very. Uh, loud crowd response to this one i think but i do think punk is going to get over i think hangman losing to punk no shame in that legend probably won't be the last we see of these two but look you brought cm punk back after seven years out he, he he's going to get a title run so why not now why not against page i think it'll be a great match uh but punk is going to win and be the new aew champion yeah and I think it'd be hard. But if he could turn heel as a champion too, that would work great. But I don't I it would it would take the crowd turning on him, I think, for that to work. He couldn't just do it like you know, some people just turn heel one day. Yeah. Uh it would have to be the crowd saying, No, we reject you. Which they probably won't because it's been seven years, and like I said, you could do all kinds of mixed back matches, dream matches. Adam Cole versus CM Punk. Um, uh, you know, uh, even even maybe not as much star power, but Jay Lethal, CM Punk. Um, yeah, you know, we never saw him and Keith Lee go at it. We never saw him in Black. I was uh, Malachi Black go at it. Pack. Yeah. There's so many good matches. Andrade. Yeah, so so many great matches they could make. Where is Andrade on this card? Is he injured right now? I don't know. Uh, inside man, get on that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> get on that. Do on top of your boy. Yeah, I mean, but the, oh, hey, AEW's roster is because of the wedding. Oh, so him and Charlotte. Now, see, I, I've heard, I hear all the rumors, but okay, so they're getting married. Is that why Charlotte? They're doing this injury angle with her. Yeah, yeah, that's a hundred percent because she's getting married. She wants to dedicate time to doing that. Oh well, good, good for them too. Good yeah, for them too. Yeah, the wedding is uh, approaching. She didn't want to be, you know, wrestling leading up to it because what if you get a black eye? Uh, right. Yeah. <laughs> True. Or get hurt some other kind of way, and now you're like trying to, yeah, nah. So WWE gave her a break. AEW's probably giving Andrade a break. That's what, that's what they're doing. Well, I'm disappointed I won't get to see the Queen Monday at Raw, but uh, I'm sure I'll see her sometime down the line. You get big time Bex. Yeah, and Bianca and ooh, my girl Oscar. Awesome. Hey, hey. There you go. I might wear that. Might wear my t. No, you know, actually, I bought a new T-shirt for this show. Yeah, I gotta get. I gotta get a show for Hell in a uh, uh, show. A shirt for Hell in a Cell. I'll do that tomorrow. So yeah, I don't that, know. If Leads us into the next topic. We, oh, Rob, the ambassador, is going to Monday Night Raw. Yeah. Leading to Hell in a Cell, and we will both be in attendance for Hell in a Cell. But go ahead. Oh, no, no, no. I can't even remember what I was going to say now. But uh, oh. yeah, I'll be there. But uh, yeah, I bought, a, I bought a t shirt for Raw, and I, but I'm not sure what I'm going to wear to uh, Hell in the Cell yet. Uh, hell in the Cell. I keep saying Hell in the Cell, but it's Hell in a Cell. Yeah, they haven't, uh, I don't think they finished booking the card yet I'm, I'm of course you know i'm hoping that some type of bloodline will be on the show you know not roman i don't know how you don't have roman on the show but well man they better announce it tomorrow night because the show is a week away yeah so yeah if, if you're going to get some bloodline involvement you're going to have to do something now uh 
you heard what Riddle said Monday. Uh, I don't know if, th- if it's true that Randy is injured, uh, but I, I don't think we're going to. I was hoping we might get a rematch between RK Bro and the Usos in the cell. I thought that would be awesome, but apparently that's not going to happen. The cell. Huh? So stupid to do it on SmackDown. Yeah. You had every right to do that match in Hell in a Cell, and you blew yeah. it. You blew it. Well, I thought they might do the rematch. I, I'd buy the rematch. I, I'd be cool with a rematch. It just doesn't have that same feel, though. But in that, it, it, those team, those four inside the cell. Oh, it'd be yeah, great. But yeah. when you have the stakes, it's the, it's the unification match here inside well, the cell. You know, you're right. But, you know, look, hey, man, Fox probably said, look, you got to give us something. All right. We need some That's ratings. That's what it came down to. Yeah. Yep. I'm sure. Yeah. No doubt. So, like I said, um, double or nothing this Sunday. We'll be streaming live immediately after giving our immediate reactions and grades. And then uh, the following week, we will be, like I said, Rob will be in person. You got a busy week. <laughs> so, yeah. The yeah. night after double or nothing, you got to go to Raw. And then yep. the next week, you got to go to Hell in a Cell. So, <laughs> yeah. And I got to drive out to Chicago for that one. So, yeah. 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 It's- getting hectic and busy out here but we this is why we do what we do to go to these shows so we appreciate you all we really do numbers going up um seeing the subscribers going up a lot i see a lot of y'all digging the the farting preacher videos we're gonna keep them coming along with other type of reaction and try not to laugh type videos we're gonna be uh keeping it coming i have a couple movie reviews on the docket i've been catching up on movies lately so I'll be doing uh, a couple. To be you'll be seeing those in the next couple of days. Um, I got some time off, so more content for y'all. Let's come. Hey, hey, just a quick suggestion. I mean, I'm psyched about it. Uh, tomorrow, Obi Wan Kenobi is going to be streaming yes. on Disney Plus, and I am tomorrow, all about I'm it. Up. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, me that. too. Man. I I am all about it. Mm-hmm. I think they're gonna tease a certain character every episode and then give it to us maybe the last two yeah i knew who i'm talking about <laughs> so <laughs> thank y'all again hope y'all enjoyed the show and stick around for more content coming follow us on social media at third generation wrestling podcast on instagram podcast underscore third on twitter email us your suggestions your thoughts recommendations at thirdgenresident at gmail.com or comment below if there's a video you want us to react to please link it in your comment or again shoot us the email and we will do it ambassador all right we always say we love y'all we appreciate y'all you're giving us some show ideas and we are doing those shows so keep it coming and and we will keep it coming and it's memorial day coming up we, we always show appreciation for all who serve, including you, the real Big E, but Memorial Day is, uh, we celebrate those who pay the ultimate price. And so just remember that and uh, make sure on Monday you, you, you pay your respects. That's right. And it, it, it is for fallen military. I think it's for anybody that, that we've lost. And obviously you and I have lost somebody very close to us recently. So um, I'm sure we will Toast one in the air, with MJ book, Absolutely. as I do almost every night. <laughs> well, I'm gonna be live at Raw, so I'm gonna be toasting, you know, probably the whole evening. Yeah. So, <laughs> all right. Take care, everybody. And as always, catch you next time.